Hello guys, welcome back to John's Workshop and in this video we're going to be doing a small piece as part of a collaboration of creators on YouTube and it's a small piece of a baby vice and the history behind that is this is a take on a, on a Wilton vice and it's been done by Nigel from Go Create Hobby Machine Shop whose sticker is just down here I, I guess you can't see that at this distance so I'll try and put something on the screen or in the in the description so go and check Nigel's channel out and definitely check his build series out on this vice so he's designed this from scratch as a, as a very small vice for a bench mounted vice and it's it's incredibly a nice you know incredibly nice to look at and incredibly useful when you look at it it's, it's a really really nice bit of kit and I'll try and put some pictures up on the screen just to give you a quick look at that so history behind this is so Nigel did all of that on YouTube on his channel a gentleman called George Oldroyd from Alabama I think it is in the US runs a not-for-profit knife making and scout for veterans uh, veteran and scout sorry knife making club and they're just moving into a new place I think they've got a new container that they've, they're currently refurbishing into a new area for this club to kind of meet and so George said to Nigel look they're really nice they're spot on for what we'd like to put on two or three of the benches could you help so Nigel's gone out to the creator community and said you know there's a lot of bits to one of these anybody anybody fancy pitching in and collaborating so put my hand up so I'm going to be making the swivel base that the vice actually sits on that bolts down to the bench. That's got a radial T-slot in it which is going to be the most difficult feature of the whole thing to do and you can see that being made on Nigel's channel as well, he's done some video of that. So I guess the collaboration is between there's guys in the UK, there's guys in Australia, in Belgium, in the USA. So people from all around the planet are contributing to this so fantastic thing you know to be part of I'm really looking forward to to doing that and also uh, the radial T slot in this base obviously sitting within that will be some T nuts so they've been made by Mr Factotum we'll, we'll just call it Mr F from now on for ease um, so Mr F's done some video of him actually making the T nuts and he's also shown some really good measurement of what he's actually achieved which helps me when I'm making the t-slot to make sure that I account for any uh, any sizes and things like that so that's all good so go and check out Mr Factotum's channel again I'll try and put something in the link so without further babbling we're going to crack on my materials arrived today for this project so we're going to get on now get some pieces cut then we'll be on to the mill I've got a bit of milling to do to get the block, blocked out sizes right and then on to the lathe for the for the main event so I'll join you at the saw just shortly. Right guys, that's got our three blocks blocked out to sizes, so we're, we should be 62, 6197 that way, 62 that way, so for a vice base, 
near enough. So the next job, now we I'm just going to check my radius cutters, see if I've got, these blocks should have a 5mm radius on the corners here. If I've got a radius cutter the right size, I might see if we can drop these rads on now before we go to the lathe. If not, when we come back, you'll be joining me on the lathe as we're setting the first one up to start putting the turn features on. There you go guys, that's got our almost a 5mm radius on both corners, so I'll do the same on the other end, not film that, and then we'll move to the lathe and start on the turning work. Right guys, we've got our first piece set up in the fore jaw on the lathe. That's been set up onto a parallel against the back of the chuck jaw to get the spacing right so that I've got enough material sticking out the front of the jaws to do the turning work that I need to do and as I've shown before I'm just using my clock stand off the surface plate I find it really really useful on the lathe it's very easy to use so I'll just bring you in now and show you the readings that we've got on this part and then we'll crack on with the manufacture so when you're clocking off the flats like this what you need to do and if you watch the needle you need to be finding your lowest point so you see the needles going high coming down to low and then going high again so that lowest point is your center point which is just there and basically then winding off going around to the opposite jaw winding on and doing the same thing finding your low point like that very very easy to use a lot I I I far prefer this to messing around with the magnet mag base far quicker and easier and simpler to use you just need to be a bit careful you don't knock it so I'll just zoom you in wrong way there we go so I'll zoom you out a little bit so you can see the part there we go so we're just over zero on that jaw, so about plus half a thou. If I go around to the opposite jaw, bring it back on. Smack on zero. And because this part's square, this is all very easy. Go to the you know the 90 degree side, a minus a thou. Go around to the opposite jaw to that. I'm on zero so that's within worst a couple of thou or slightly less which is fine for what we're doing here so I'm not going to mess any more with that we'll take the clock off and we'll start getting set up for our first operation which is going to be putting the central ball through the center and then I'm leaving this tea slot till very last <laughs> we'll do some we've got some turning work to do actually we're going to face off the front face we're going to turn the angled portion and then we'll attack the t-slot very last
Right guys, I've bored that out to, I've got a 14mm solid carbide drill here with a ground 14mm shank and I've bored that out, this should be a 14mm fit So I've bored that out to a a good fit on that on that drill shank. And this is hard, you know, when you're doing a collaboration like this between different people, it's hard to know what other people are making these two. So I know the key, I think the key's being made that fits into here by Harold, I believe, in the US. So there you go, Harold, if you get a chance to see this before you make the key, you now know if you aim for 14mm nominal it's going to be a good fit in these bases so I'll, I'll make all three to that same fit standard right I can put this off no longer so we're on to the we're on to the radial t-slot so I've ground up a trepanning tool and I'll probably go into a bit more detail on that in a separate video in terms of what a trepanning tool should look like in terms of clearances or sweeps is the correct name so this is the first trepanning tool I've just been trying to work it out uh, that I've ground for about 19 years so if this doesn't work I will not be at all surprised but we'll give it a go so we've ground it up I think I've got enough sweep clearance on the outside which is the only side that I need clearance on for this particular one so we'll bring that in now and set it up. Now the difficulty I've got is when Nigel did this on his first one he could actually put the bias base up onto this and mark his centre position. He transferred it using a transfer punch for the hole so he could see where the slot needed to be to, as a starter. I don't have that ability so what I'm going to do is set the very outer edge of the tool to a known diameter which is the diameter it's hard to measure but it's the diameter at the transition between this angle and the face and then we're going to wind in a set amount plus a bit of clearance I've ground this tool deliberately undersized width wise so that I've got a bit of leeway and then we'll take a very very light scratch on the surface and, and then we'll check that with a vernier to make sure we're in the parish and then we'll see how we get on All right, absolute country mile away. So I think what I've done there is forgotten radius versus diameter on my cross slide or something, or I've made a, a a cock up of the measurements. So, but that is just a light scratch, and I think that will get lost in a deburr on the edge of the slot. So I think we're okay. Worst case scenario, I've got enough stock left on this. I'll face this front face off a tiny bit and go a little bit further back with the angle on this first piece but I've just adjusted my measurements so we'll try again it's not happy at that speed so we'll go a bit slower and see what we get
Right then guys, this is where it all can and possibly will go wrong. So I've ground, I've got to have my fingers behind this to get it to focus because it's so small. So give you an idea, there's my scriber point which is a 3 mil diameter. So I've ground this tool up, so I've gone for about 3 or 4 degrees relief on both of these sides, about 5 or 6 on the top and about 5 degrees relief but radial on the front and that's to put our groove in I've just left enough clearance between the cutting edge and this relief that I've ground in here to allow me to get to the depth of the slot I hope what I'm not sure about is whether there's enough relief down here or whether I'm going to get a foul condition in this area so I might even need to take some more material off down underneath here to make this thing even weaker than it already is but we will give it a shot and see what happens It's going okay. I'm going to take the pressure off and turn the camera off and I'll bring you back when we've got somewhere near. Alright then guys, happy days. That tool cut absolutely fantastic. The only issue I had really was swarf clearance is a bit of a nightmare and that's largely because I've got everything so tight up there's not a lot of room for the swarf to go. So a couple of stops as we go along just to clear the swarf and nice and steady 260 rpm and it cut sweet as a nut to be honest uh, I'm really really pleased with that so it's only got to do that another twice and survive and that's all three done so and you can see here where I'm zoomed in this was my first touch on when I was absolutely miles off with the trepanning tool it's literally a thou deep so I'm just going to take a thou skim off this front face to clean that up and that concludes the turning on this first piece so the next job on this will be I'll bring you back when we're well I think there might be a bit more turning to do actually I need to skim the back side of this block off now to finish thickness now I can either mill that or I can turn it so I'll decide by the time I've done two more of these I might have had quite enough of staring at the four jaw so I might end up doing that on the milling machine or I might turn these round sit them up against a parallel and skim it off on the lathe which will be the quickest way of doing it absolutely and give me the best surface finish so we'll probably end up doing it on the lathe but I'll bring you back when we're doing that either way alright guys I'm just on the second one of these three and I thought I'm going to attack this slightly differently and I thought this might be a useful tip so where I was struggling before to know where to go in with the trepanning tool we're going to do something slightly different on this one using good old fashioned technology so what I've done is I've just put my centre centre mark in or my, my spot drill in ready for drilling the central hole I've got two sets of dividers set out just off of vernier and I'm basically just going to mark myself that's one, that's the outer one don't ask me why I used a small set of dividers to do the, the biggest 
scribe and the biggest set of dividers to do the smallest scribe. They're just the that's just the way they came out of the box. Not super ideal, but it just gives me a target area. Now I've got those two lines on there. When I come in with my trepanning tool, I can stick it in between those two lines for the first plunge, and at least I know I'm in the right ballpark. And then I can start measuring to get to finished dimensions. Just thought that might be a handy tip. Dead easy, dead quick. Couple of minutes to do, and I know I'm in a safe zone when I go in to plunge. The last job on this side, I'm at my 45 degree position this side and we're just going to spot drill down into the groove and we're going to put a drill through all the way through the part so when we flip it over we can pick that hole up as our centre position for the entry slot for the drawing so that's what we'll do now. Right, I'm just trying to put a setup in place for the entry slots that go in in the back of the part so that the T-nuts can go in into the radial T-slot and I'm trying to avoid taking the vise off and putting all the rotary table on for what this is I think this will be a good enough setup so I've got my protractor set to 45 degrees I've got a small angle plate on the table clamped in well clamped in position and I've already set this to be honest but I'll just show you how I've done it. So I'm lining the top of the protractor up with the vice base and basically that's how I've set my angle plate up like that. So I know my angle plate's at 45 degrees using the protractor and then what we're going to do then is use two one two three blocks and we're going to sit those on the table, just make sure that's all clean, I think it is a little bit like that and then we're going to use a parallel to get my spacing right off the angle plate then we can sit our part up to the parallel I've got a T-nut in the slot, excuse my head. So I'm going to drop the T nut, T the stud into the T nut, make sure that's in the centre of the hole so we're not cocked. Now what I don't know is whether I've got enough space to clear this nut so we're just going to check that before I start. If so this will be a nice easy setup for all three. If not I might have to have a bit of a rethink on how we do this.
but we'll I'm just going to measure that up now and I'll bring you back so we're all tightened up I've just about got enough clearance so I've got a 5mm end mill in there that was a 5mm hole that we drilled so what I've done there is I've brought the end mill down until it travels in the hole nice and freely and I've set my stick out to be just enough to clear the top of this nut on the underside of the collet holder when I'm down at depth hopefully and I've zeroed my DRO in X and Y over the centre of that hole so it's a dead quick setup now for the rest for the other two just to do that and then what we're going to do is pocket this out in X and Y down to the right depth which is to the back face of the T-slot looking at it from this direction so that will become clear as we get into it so we'll give that a go see how we get on There we go guys, that's got our first entry slot done, so I'm happy with that. What I've done is gone slightly longer, so I've hit the width off the drawing this way, which is the important bit, but I've gone slightly longer than the width to allow for the corner radiuses that I've got from the way that I've machined this out. So I'm looking at the drawing, I'm confident of that there'll be no problem at all fitting these in. That, that aperture's plenty big enough to drop the T-nuts into the back of there. So happy with that, we'll get that off, get it deburred, and we'll get the other two brought up to the same standard, which I won't film because it's the same thing, and then I'll bring you back when we've done that. Alright guys, that's got the hard stuff done. So that's all three done to the same standard with the entry slot put into the back, as you can see here, and I'm just now making up three brass press fit bungs that one's not quite to size yet that will just go in there press fit in once the t-slots are in place just to hold everything in that's the final piece I'm not going to film that that's just a bit of bit of hand work ready with a file I'm not machining them they're going to get press fitted in so so that's it that's largely the end of the project so there's all three. It's been a, an interesting component with some interesting features in. Thank you, Nigel. Deburring, <laughs> deburring this entry slot is uh, is fun. Anyway, we've got them. We've got them where they need to be. So I'll get these. I'll get these three brass bits made up, and then I'll bring you back, and we'll wrap this episode up. Alright guys, I thought I'd just show this as a bit of a tip, so what this calls for is a blanking plate in the back so we've made some out of brass, these are all handwork, nothing other than bandsaw and file to get them down to size they're a little bit undersized on the width, this is 15.875 and my aperture is 16 to draw in, so a little bit slightly under width they're bang on on the length because I've filed them to length and the width was 3.125 so I've filed that down to 3mm sounds horrendous but it, it's only a couple of minutes work 
I failed the radiuses on the corner and what you can see now is that's a, a really close fit in there but it's not a press fit and that's important in the context of this because I'm just going to poke that back out now from the inside this is calling for a light press fit now trying to do that is uh, uh, all the way around the periphery of something and judge the light press fit is quite difficult it's often a lot easier to do what I've done there and make it a really tight sliding fit and then upset the surfaces which is what we're going to do to make the light press fit and the way I'm doing that and I don't know whether you'll be able to see this but you'll get the idea is I'm holding this up against the vise at the back here and I'm just using the center punch and basically because I know we're slightly undersized on the width I'm giving it a tiny bit more on the width just a tiny we're going to go three three punches down the, the width like that same on the other side and I know you can't see but I'll show you the end result in a minute nothing accurate about this because none of it's going to be seen and then I'm going to give it two across the end where because the end's a bit shorter than the width same on the other end So there we go. So what we've done there is we've upset the surfaces with the center pops and what that does is every time you center pop something the material doesn't you know it doesn't disappear you don't squash it down into the material what it does is actually squashes it back out past the punch and leaves a raised a raised, a raised edge and it's often a lot easier to control a light press fit by using that method than it is to try and control it by all the sizes so what you can see there now is that's not going to fit in but what that will do is with a vice press now that will press in nice and flush to this back face and it won't be too difficult to get it back out because the only places it's really a press fit is where I've put those dots in so it makes it easier to disassemble again so thought that might be a tip for someone else who's doing something similar so that's us, we've got all three made to that standard. Last job now, I'm going to give them an oil up and get them bagged up and off to Nigel. So pleased with those, quite a bit of work gone into those, but I'm pleased with how they've turned out. So I'll get them oiled up in a bag and then I'll bring you back and we'll close this episode out. Well, there we go guys, that's it for the the vice collaboration, so I've got all three pieces made with the blanking plates. Very pleased with how they've turned out. Just hope that they all fit together. They should do, so I've, I've held drawing dimensions as closely as possible through that. So that's been quite a few interesting setups to get those done. So they're all oiled up and boxed up, nice and safe. I'm not doing air mail because it's pouring down with rain. Michelle so I'm not going to go and stand outside and throw throw these in the air to Nigel and I, I probably live further away from Nigel than you do actually even though I'm in Scotland I don't know maybe not anyway there they are so I'm going to get those off to you Nigel very shortly and hopefully they'll arrive in good condition and you'll be able to have a look at them so that's it for this project I've really enjoyed doing those as I said it's been great to be part of the collaboration I've quite enjoyed that there's still more people making things as well which is good to carry on watching the rest of it and we will catch you all very soon on another video when we'll be making something else.